Module 5, the assembly difference, the best practice and performance within 2D CNC milling at its best in Autodesk Inventor HSM. Module 5 is the beginning stages of my favorite workflow within HSM, which gives me the capability of quickly changing the program if a part changes with a revision from a customer in the future. In Module 5, we're going to take a look at the structure of the assembly so that we can successfully get started within the assembly. And that's going to be placing parts and components successfully. From there, we're going to go into relationships, get into constraints, and how to constrain our parts and our fixtures within our files. We're going to go ahead and build our JAWS within the assembly file properly name them so they can be machined and created on the shop floor as separate parts. Then we're going to add our adaptive vise, which is going to be a vise constrained to our jaws that we can use on multiple parts. Lastly, what we're going to do is steal all of the other CAM processes within the part itself and migrate them over to the assembly. Then we're going to edit all of those processes for all of the customer changes that were necessary to the new assembly file. So far over the course, we've taken a look at how to get started with an inventor, change and prep a single modeled part, and get into the 2D programming side of things uh, within a part environment. So now we're going to take a look at how to get into an assembly, which is the best way to actually use Inventor HSM. It's going to be able to allow us to be more dynamic whenever there's a rev change or a quantity change within the actual program itself. So getting started in an assembly is actually quite easy. We're going to go over to our home page. I'm going to click on the assembly tab and we're going to be launched into our assembly template that we created in the first module of the course. Now within this you'll see we have our part folders that we created for setting us up to be able to use HSM most efficiently and we'll go through this a little bit in a moment as we import parts and place them in the proper place. With the assembly open the first thing I'm going to want to do is save it. Now I'm going to save it to our Pluralsight customer folder and we're going to name it with the, uh, with the part number and the rev number. Now that we have that saved, we're going to go ahead and place our actual part component in first. With a lot of CAD CAM softwares, this is something that needs to happen and then you have to go and move around the part. The beautiful thing about working a parametric design software is that we no longer have to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit place component up in the components panel. I'm going to navigate to our part. We're going to find our pump front cover. I'm going to open it. Now, once it's in the placement mode, you'll see that I can move it around the screen. This is basically going to allow it to float anywhere it wants to. Well, a good thing to do is to right-click and then place this at grounded origin. Now, what this is going to do is that's going to place that at that zero, zero point for the parts creation itself. Now, the reason why that's a good thing to do is because when we when we go to do anything like a rev change or things like that then we're we're able to just bring components in based off of where it's been modeled from straight from the customer this just helps things out a little bit and keeps things a little organized inside of inventor with this component placed what we're going to do next is import our stock now you'll remember within our pump front cover part we actually created and exported our stock. So the customer has called this in now that we're going into assembly mode we're actually going to be doing this part into a production style run we're going to want to we're going to want to have to have this cast and the customer agreed and they want cast parts for this so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the visibility on on our cast part here just so I can show you what we exported we created this using direct edit and then we exported it for use for the future so let's go back into our assembly here now what you'll see is is that changed from the actual individual part so this solid model updated as we went we want to do this separately and the reason why is so that we can have the stock and the part 
in the assembly at the same time. So just be careful when you're doing that, that, that you have the solid selected correctly. As with the wrong solid selected, your parts are going to update and so are your programs. So it's a good idea to make sure that you've got that part with the visibility turned on correctly and the rest of them turned off.